Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at the basics of building your own plugins in Motion for Final Cut Pro. When you first open up Motion, you should be greeted by this project browser. If you are not, you can actually go up to File, New from Project Browser, and that will give you these options. From here, you can see that you've got your generators, titles, transitions, and effects, and just your regular Motion projects. Today, we're gonna to be creating a title. However, a lot of the same things that we do in the title can be done throughout the other plugin effects. Go ahead, select your title and we will push open. Before we start building the plugin, I just want to take a moment to show you the absolute basics of publishing parameters to Final Cut Pro. And then after that, we will actually create our very own plugin. To get started, go ahead and just select your rectangle tool. So you've got your rectangle, you can go into your inspector and you can see I've got the fill color here. I'm gonna disable the outline for this tutorial. But if we go into the fill color, we can actually click this down arrow and nearly every attribute in motion, not every single one, but nearly every attribute can be published by clicking this down arrow and then going down to publish. So now if I were to save this with command S, the color attribute would be able to be changed within Final Cut Pro. Along with that are rigs. Now I'm gonna just show you the most basic of rigs. So let's say we wanna make it so this rectangle can be enabled or disabled. So if we go over to our properties, go down to the opacity, you can click this down arrow and we're going to go to add to rig, create new rig and we're gonna select checkbox. We can rename this checkbox to be enable rectangle. So now we have these options here. When it is disabled, we can change our opacity here. So now it will be at 0%. When we enable it, you can see how it saved the state of being at 100%. So real quick before we publish this to Final Cut Pro, I forgot you have to go to enable rectangle and then we have to click the down arrow and also publish that parameter. So now if I push command S, we can just call this rectangle and we can go and save it into any of our categories and publish that. If I were to open up Final Cut Pro and jump over into Final Cut Pro, you can see that we have our rectangle here. I can change this to whatever color because we published that parameter and we also created our checkbox to enable or disable the rectangle. So that gives you an ultra basic idea of publishing parameters. So let's do something that's a little bit more advanced just to apply some of these methods. So I'm gonna hide Final Cut Pro. Let's say we wanna create maybe a list that comes out from the left-hand side, and we wanna make it so they have the ability to change the color of the list, and maybe the list is kind of see-through, almost like it's a window that's kind of blurry. So let's go ahead, create a rectangle, and from there, we can go into our position, and we're gonna animate on the X parameters here. So I'm gonna click this down arrow, add parameter behavior, and I'm gonna use ramp. Ramp is a really great way to get smooth animations very easily. Go ahead, move forward in your timeline uh, about a second or so. Select your ramp layer and push O for out and that will trim it down to the one second mark. Now if we jump up here, we can look at the start value, which is zero pixels and end value, which is zero pixels. Go to your start value and drag that to be in the negative. From there, you can see our ramp is actually happening here down in my keyframe editor, which you can get with command eight. We want this to be a smooth line. So let's go to our curvature and drag that on up. And you can see we've got this nice S curve. So now this rectangle, is just gonna pop out nice and smooth. From there, let's go ahead and add some text to be over the top of this rectangle. So go and select your text tool. And if we click and drag, you can see that it creates an actual text box, which means that if I were to fill this out with text, it's going to auto wrap and I should change this to black so you can actually see what's being written. So you can see that it's actually wrapping it around the box for me, which can be very handy. So I'm gonna delete all of that text and I'm just gonna put in a few bullet points of one, two, three, four, and five. Great, okay, so we can scale that up in our format. And what's great is when we publish this to Final Cut Pro, this checkbox is auto enabled, which means you can edit all of these parameters within Final Cut Pro, just like any other title. But if you wanna make it so you can't edit it, you can disable this checkbox here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add some text at the top. So I'm just gonna push enter. Oops, nope, that's not working. I'm gonna push escape, there we go. Then I'm gonna select the text tool with T, click, and we can do reasons to subscribe. 
and let's go ahead and change that to be black as well. Jump back to our formatting options, change the scale on that, and we will get our selection tool here. Doesn't have to be beautiful. This is just to show you the basics of creating a plugin. Now, I did a big oopsie and forgot to put my playhead at the beginning of the timeline. So go ahead, select your two layers and push I, and that will extend them out to the beginning there. Let's go ahead and make it so that behind this rectangle, it's actually see-through like a window. So to do that, we're gonna select our title background and we're gonna create what's called a clone layer. Now the clone layer will exactly mimic the title background, but anything we apply to this clone layer will not affect the title background. However, if we apply something to the title background, it will affect the clone layer. So we have our clone layer. Let's right click and we'll add an image mask. Now an image mask is just going to tell motion where we want stuff to be visible and stuff to be invisible. So if we have an image mask on our clone layer, only the section that we define with this rectangle, which I will just click and drag to the image mask section, will be visible of the clone layer. And that's going to auto disable this rectangle, which we don't really need right now. So now if we apply an effect to this clone layer, we'll go up to filters, blur, and we'll set this to Gaussian blur. We can drag that on up to a full 64 and you'll notice how it expands it out past the edges. To fix that, we'll just click this crop button and it will be good to go. Okay, so now in Final Cut Pro, if we were to look at this clone layer, we would actually see that the background is blurred behind it. However, our rectangle is fully opaque. So to fix that, what we wanna do is actually create a secondary rectangle. So I'm gonna push Command D and that will duplicate our original rectangle and I'll just call this the color rectangle and we'll call this secondary one the alpha mask. So now our mask is gonna be affected by this alpha mask. Our color rectangle is what is going to drive the color of our object. So we can go into our properties and we could set the opacity to something like 50%. I'm gonna disable the visibility of the alpha mask, jump it into shape, and let's turn this to something red. And I'm also gonna disable the outline on both this rectangle and also on the alpha mask. Let's say we wanna make it so people can change the color of this rectangle. We can click, we can go to publish, and so now they can change the color of that rectangle. Let's also say that maybe we wanna make it so that that text gets written on with the rectangle. Just select the two text layers, right click, and we will group it. We'll right click again and add an image mask to that group. Then we can drag our alpha mask to the image mask. And so now it's going to be written as the animation happens. And it looks really good. So let's also come to the end of this animation and we're gonna make it so people can enable or disable this animation. So to do that, push Shift M and that will create a marker on your timeline. Double click that and we're gonna go to change the type to build in optional. So we'll push okay and so now people can choose whether they want that animation to happen. Let's do one last thing where they can enable or disable this backdrop here. So to do that, go ahead, select your color rectangle, go to properties and then go to your opacity, click that down arrow, and instead of doing publishing, we're gonna add it to a rig, create a new rig and checkbox. So now when this is enabled, we want it at 50%. When it's disabled, we want it at 0%. Then we can rename this to be enable backdrop. So now we can enable or disable. However, this is not disabling the clone layer. So we also need to do the same thing here. So we'll click that down arrow, add to rig, rig, and we're gonna choose enable backdrop. Then when it's enabled, we want it a full 100%. When it's disabled, we want it 0%. And then we'll just re-enable it and push Command S to save this. So now if I jump back into Final Cut, I already published this as a rectangle. Um, I could probably save it as a new name if I did Command Shift S and we'll just call it list. And we can put this in whatever category we want. We'll push publish. Oh, and real quick before I do that, we need to publish this over to Final Cut. So click this down arrow and push publish. And a quick way to check and see what parameters you have published is if you jump into project, you can go to project over here and you can see all the parameters you have published. If you don't like the order they're in, you can click and drag and change their order or you should be able to, there we go, just like that. So I'll push command S to publish that, jump into Final Cut and we can find the list. Um, I've got too many lists here. We'll go to Final Cut Bro, there it is. So I've got my list here and you can see we've got our text here, which we can also move around freely if we want. And as it 
draws out, you can see that it is blurry behind the rectangle and we can also change the color. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button, consider subscribing, and I will see you on Friday for a Final Cut Friday tutorial.